this is not the time for sports. Uh, this is the time for saving lives. This is TSN In-Depth. I'm Rick Westhead. I'm joined by Scott Mitchell from TSN and Dr. Alan Drummond with the Canadian Association of Emergency Room Physicians. Dr. Drummond, thanks for joining us. And why don't you just walk us through some of the different cases that you're seeing in your own emergency room these days? Right. Uh, so Perth is a small town, 6,000 people, 25,000 in the broader community, just south of Ottawa, just north of Kingston. It's a retirement community. And over the last week or two, uh, it's starting to become a bit of a COVID hospital with lots of elderly people, usually from nursing homes, who are fairly ill uh, with COVID and require hospitalization. We've had to uh, resuscitate some. We've had to put people on ventilators and ship them to the city uh, for ongoing management. We're about a dozen now in the last, uh, in the last week and, and a bit, which is a lot, actually. It's been described as the calm before the storm. I think that's quite uh, appropriate. Uh, our emergency department volumes are down by 50, 60 percent across the board from coast to coast. Our hospitals have worked very hard to free up capacity, but will we be overwhelmed? Only time will tell. How much worse is it going to get? Well, I think if we relax social distancing, uh, it could get a lot worse. You know, the, the, the surge, if it comes, is to be expected sometime within the next couple of weeks towards the end of April, early May. Uh, we're trying to flatten that curve a little bit so that our healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed. Uh, and it's really going to just come down to, you know, can we as a society you know, maintain this sort of rigorous approach to uh, staying at home, uh, social distancing, avoiding unnecessary contact with other people, uh, and hand washing? It, it really does all come down to us. There's no, uh, all the modeling systems in the world mean nothing. Uh, you know, if, if, if society decides that they've had enough. So let's hope we can maintain this into the summer at least. We want to get our country open again. We want to have our sports leagues open. You want to watch sports. It's important. We miss sports. We miss everything. We want to get back. Doctor, when you think of where things sit today and COVID-19 from a pro sports perspective, what needs to happen for these leagues to get started again? Well, you know, I, I think you need to keep a perspective here. And I, uh, I mean, I love sports. I, I, I grew up at the Montreal Expos, but this is not the time for sports. Uh, this is the time for saving lives. You know, we're not, we're not talking about fun and games and sports and competition. The only competition that matters right now is protecting the lives of Canadians. So I, I understand that people, you know, might want sports, but I think the greater Canadian population probably says, well, let's, let's put this on hold until it's safer. I know that some people's livelihoods depend on it. And I understand that people that run the restaurants and bars and, and man the concession stands and look after parking your car and all that kind of thing, their livelihood depends on this, and I get it. But, but there's no dollar amount that you can place on somebody's life. We should also you know, consider the lives of the players. They may be icons, but they're not, they are not immortal. And yes, COVID is largely, the mortality rate is much, much higher in people over age 60 or over age 80. Uh, but young people do die of COVID. So why on earth would we put these young men and, and women uh, in harm's way uh, by making them travel, uh, crowding into crowded dressing rooms, uh, being, you know, uh, playing against another team and exposing them to a virus that could potentially kill them? It just is not appropriate. So based on where we are now in April, uh, based on your medical expertise and what we're seeing happening uh, in different pockets through North America. What's your best guess for when we would be in a position to start talking about playing professional sports again, even if it's in empty arenas or stadiums? Well, I can't really, I mean, again, uh, there is some discussion about a second wave of this. We might get through into the spring, warmer weather comes, that might mean a bit of a brief respite. And, and this being Canada, you know, starting in October, November, we all have coughs and runny noses as part of the, as part of the deal. And, and so you can't really always obviously tell who has influenza and who has COVID since they, they mimic one another. Canadian universities are planning for this fall by, by probably not having uh, in-classroom uh, lectures, but rather doing it by distance. So uh, are we gonna crowd stadiums and arenas? Uh, you know, come this October for a hockey season, uh, and 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 run the risk of, run the risk of a of a second wave. There's a lot of anxiety in the community. There's a lot of concern. There's a lot of fear. 
And quite frankly, I'm not sure that once we're through this, whether people are really gonna want to uh, go and sit in a hockey arena and have somebody sneeze all over them right next, right on the next seat over and wondering, is this the beginning of COVID, you know, 2.0? So I, I, I think it would be smarter to think about next year. So doctor, when you hear that Major League Baseball is planning to open up next month, potentially sequester players in Arizona, what obstacles and problems jump out to you with that plan? Well, I think it's time for everybody to grow up. Uh, you know, the boys of summer can, uh, can wait. Uh, uh, again, how, how much value do you place on the lives and well-being of your players uh, that you would submit them? Being in Arizona is not going to be some kind of protective influence from COVID. This is a novel virus. We don't exactly know what we're dealing with. We are dealing with this essentially on the fly and making up stuff as we go along, trying to adapt to, uh, to its rapid changes. You know, America has not done very well uh, with respect to their management of, uh, of this pandemic for a lot of reasons we can all understand. And uh, it's not over just because things may be starting to ease up a little bit in New York City. Uh, for sure, all 50 states at some point or, or another are gonna be affected. This is still a public health crisis. So sequestering to me means not very much except putting players at risk. Let's talk about the US and Canadian border. Based on what you're seeing come out of the United States almost on a daily basis now, you know, the world wrestling entertainment was ruled to be an essential service in the state of Florida this week. Uh, you have mega churches holding in-person services throughout states like Louisiana, um, Florida, Texas. When could you foresee the, it being safe enough for Canada to reopen that border with the U.S.? Well, I mean, that, that again will depend on the very best advice that public health experts can give us. But let's, let's be straight. Like America, this is a bit of a, bit of a balls up. And uh, there's, no, there's no way to rephrase this. Uh, you know, a country that thinks a gun shop is an essential service in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, it's a, it's a different world. I mean, I'd like to think that we're, you know, bosom buddies, we're not. And again, are we gonna expose Canadian athletes or any athlete uh, to uh, unnecessary risk, which I think, frankly, um, uh, America poses right now until they get their, their act together. So can we not just put things on hold for another six months or so until we've got this sorted out, until we've got a vaccine in place, until pe people can be maximally protected? So how do you feel when you hear some world leaders talk about restarting their economies? Well, I'm not an economist, uh, uh, and, I, and I, don't, I don't propose to understand that. I think, I think, what, I think the only rational comment is, uh, uh, moving forward, uh, we need much more extensive testing of everybody to understand uh, where we're at as a baseline, to understand who's able to work, who isn't able to work, who's safe, who isn't safe. We've got 35 million people. We've got, we've got a ways to go yet. When you think of the aftermath of all this from a fan perspective, uh, what changes do you think should come from this? Are, are we at the point where hand sanitizers should be right beside the cup holder in front of every seat? Uh, no, probably not. I mean, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows what the new normal is going to look like. I, I think for sure that as a Canadian society, we're going to have to be better prepared for, for pandemic planning. I mean, we've gone through SARS, H1N1, MERS, Ebola, these are all in my clinical lifetime in the last 20 years. Uh, we never seem to have really learned our lesson uh, very well, to be straight. Uh, I think this time around, however, uh, there are going to be some big time questions asked uh, when this is all over in terms of how did we get to this point uh, that we were so ill prepared for what we knew was coming, you know, based on, on last fall in China. So uh, there's going to have to be some thought about all of this, and I don't know how they decide how they're going to make a profit out of sports if, they're, if the density of a sports arena is less. I, I don't know. Let's say a league does return, say it's baseball in, in June or July, and a player gets infected on a team. Do you see any solution other than a full shutdown at that point? Well, isn't that precisely the question? I mean, isn't that precisely the point? Uh, I mean, I, I don't follow basketball, but they were pretty quick off the mark to shut it down when 
when one player uh, tested positive, and that was like a thoroughly appropriate maneuver, incredibly socially responsible. So, uh, you know, I've read media reports about uh, South Korea, uh, and uh, there have, are some American players in that league who say, look, uh, yeah, we can do the social distancing in the locker room. We can thermal scan everybody that enters the uh, the ballpark. But one player getting infected, the whole thing's going to fall apart. I, I had a chance to talk to a couple doctors about the concept of sports starting up again, Dr. Drummond. One of the things I've heard is, um, as you know, at any major sports event, you have to have doctors and paramedics. God forbid one of the athletes gets hurt during a game and has to be taken to a hospital. Um, so there's, there's, there's been some concern about pulling resources away from hospitals. Do you share that concern? Is that legitimate? Well, it's a totally legitimate concern. Like, um, resources are tight. Uh, you know, Canada, uh, for all of its benefits, uh, you know, has not planned really well in terms of uh, uh, hospital capacity, technological resources, human resources, staffing. We're short of physicians. We're, we're short of... Uh, we're short. We're definitely very short of nurses. Uh, the, the paramedic uh, paramedics of uh, uh, in in some centers have been shut down because uh, if they get one one person gets exposed in a crew to a COVID nineteen patient, uh, both he and his partner are are uh, or he or she or a partner are, are quarantined for two weeks. So you're absolutely right. Uh, this is all hands on deck. I mean, we're talking about uh, bringing in retired physicians, retired nurses to staff uh, hospitals, to staff nursing homes. Um, and everybody is, every person that volunteers for this is precious. So do we really want them uh, hanging out in hockey rinks uh, when they could be on the front lines of healthcare uh, doing a far greater good for a far greater number of people? Obviously, the answer is we want them on the front lines of healthcare, not not on a hockey ring. Do you see anything that sports leagues? You kind of touched on it earlier, but do you see anything sports leagues can do to learn from this and put plans into place in, in case this happens again five, ten years down the road? Well, society as a whole is going to have to look at this lessons learned. Uh, you know, I think I'd be very surprised if there wasn't a national commission at some point. Uh, to the to discuss the lessons learned in this because there have been so many deficiencies that have been highlighted by this in terms of the way we look after the elderly in terms in terms of supply chains and how we rely on foreign countries for goods and services uh, and sports will have to be part of that equation so sports organizations are going to have to think about this these pandemics are not going to go away uh, we're going to get through this one but there's going to be another and there's another one after that and uh and so, yeah, we're going to have to think about the well-being of our players, well-being of our fans, and uh, and contingency plans for, you know, how we screen, how we have a uh, a monitoring system to detect these things early. But for sure, sports is a reflection uh, of what goes on in society. In my in my humble opinion, it is probably going to have to have a period of introspection as well, and, and try and learn some lessons from this, and see if we can adapt going forward to a, to a new world order. Such a fascinating interview and discussion. Dr. Drummond, uh, on behalf of Scott and I, thank you very, very much for your time. All the best. Take care.